everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Today I'm going to do a special request from a former student of mine, a lovely young lady called Kathy. So shout out to Kathy. And her request is um, to learn how to thread a serger. If you are new to sewing, you might not have a serger yet. I highly recommend trying to pick one up even second hand. This old Kenmore I got, I need to say, 30 years ago? probably was 30 years ago and it just keeps going. They are quite expensive. If you can afford a new Skookum one, you could go for it. But I love my old Kenmore. If you pick one up secondhand, it might not come with a manual. You might not know how to thread it. And if you're new to um, using a serger, I'm going to give you a few good tips on changing the color of your thread and then how to, how to serge, what to be careful of, how to turn corners, and then a couple of little tricks for serging off a finished edge as well. Before you even start threading it, if your machine has no thread in it, it's a great time to give it a good cleaning, especially if you're picking it up secondhand or if you just haven't used your serger for a long time. So to give it a clean, we're going to open up the front panel and the side panel. And then mm -hmm, I've got one of these um, awesome little handheld Dysons and You can just go in and clean up all of that lint and dust in there and all those little threads. The other thing you can do, even if you have threads in there, is use one of these little makeup brushes. I just picked that up from the dollar store and you can use that to get right in there and clean all of that up. It's good to keep your machine clean um, because the chunks of lint actually collect oil and so they will deplete your machine of oil. You can just go in with your makeup brush and get all that lint out of there. You can come in on the other side here. Sometimes you'll get a little donut of lint collecting around the moving parts here, and those will just suck up oil out of your machine. So it really is good to keep it clean. Okay, so here's my old Kenmore. Every serger is a little bit different, but they do follow very similar pathways. So what you're going to need for this is one of these serger tweezers that should come with your serger. I keep my serger tweezers hanging right up here at the top of the thread stand so I know right where they are. If you get an older serger, it will probably come with one of these awesome little baskets on the front that catches all of your threads. That's such a brilliant thing and I don't know why manufacturers stopped making those, but most of the new machines don't have those anymore. The panel here is going to push out to the right and come down. And this is where you find your little road map. And this, I, I've never seen a serger that didn't have something just like this. It's always color coordinated. So there's a green, red, blue, and yellow line. And then you can see that all of your points along the way have the same colors coordinating. So right up here, this far right the looper thread is going to have that green dot green arrow here and then we're going to follow everything that has a green dot so that makes it pretty easy to thread your serger all of the threads have their own pathway that's color coded so i'm going to use that same color for each of the threads i'm going to thread with green red blue and yellow normally i would never do that but i think you will be able to see a little bit better so right up at the top here, I'm just going to pop my thread on and bring it up into that thread guide. I'll just leave that one hanging. The next one is the red. And that goes into the thread guide. And then blue. And then yellow. Good. Now when we thread a serger, we go from right to left. So we're going to start with the two looper threads, and then we'll do the two needle threads. So we're going to start with this one. And you see mine has two holes here. Sometimes there's, you know, a different way of getting your thread through here, but usually there's something that puts some tension on the thread. So mine goes through once and through twice. Now they're all going to follow these lines down. This one goes down into its own tension guide there. And while I'm standing up here, I'm going to just put all of them through those little holes and then through their lines.
Good. Okay, so those are all in there. Okay, let's talk about the tension for a second here. Um, for mine, it works best four, three, three, and four, but I've seen some where it's best just to be on all threes. Some of them don't use numbers. Some of them have, um, instead of three being the normal tension, some of them have an N. N for normal, you might have Ns all the way across. But I've seen some sorters where it's minus two, minus one, minus two, minus one, that kind of thing. So you will have to play around with your tension to see what works best for your machine. I kind of hold the thread at both ends here and just make sure it's really into that tension disc through its thread guide here. You can see really clearly here that little road map, the part we're going to be taking here. And this finger here, you can see that. This finger right here, that's the trickiest part of threading the whole thing. The finger that kind of comes through this way, we have to get the thread in at the back of the knuckle here. And it's going to come across the finger and come out at the point of the finger there. Okay, but that is all. That is all inside. This is the little finger it's talking about in that picture. So that's where we're heading. Okay. So to get there, we follow these thread guides, the ones, anything marked with green, tucking in behind this one and under that one. And then you can see that green dot right there. I've got to go into that hole. Good. And now I'm passing it through the machine to my, my left hand on the other side. And now turning the wheel towards me until this little, that's the knuckle on that finger. Got to get that as far out this way as we can. And then start pushing that thread into that knuckle. Good. So I want to get about an inch in there. Now I'm going to keep my finger pressed against that so that I can turn the wheel towards me again and get that finger to come out on this side without losing that thread. Okay, now I can reach in this side and grab that same green thread coming out there and then turn the wheel towards me so I can see the point of the finger now. Now I want to turn the wheel until I get these two fingers separated out from each other and push that thread now just through the tip of that finger. Good, and then I can grab it on the other side. I can tuck it up under the foot. I like to have it just going straight from the tip of that finger and out underneath the presser foot. All right, that was the hardest part of the whole thing. After that, we're on easy street. The red thread now comes down following that line through its own tension dial and then into that thread guide. Tuck under into that one and under this one. So on the road map, these two points are these two points. Then this point is that, this point is this. So now I'm gonna go from there up into this little like paper clip thing and then out through a little hole in that finger. So here we are, there's that paper clip. And behind there. And then out through the point on that finger. Now see how this this one is coming across and getting in my way. I want to get that off of there. So you don't want them interacting yet. So no interaction of your threads at this point. You can see why you want tweezers, right? Because you're, you're in this little tight space. Also, if your thread is fuzzy, give it a little haircut. Much easier to get through those little holes. Into that little finger there. Good. Good, so that's the red one done. So we've got our two looper threads done. Now it's just the two needles and they're not too bad. On our roadmap, you can see that the two needle threads both come down their own lines in the front. The blue one comes underneath this sort of dividing panel here and then comes up and they end up together there. They come down together and then they divide up into their own two needles. So that's pretty easy. So the blue thread is gonna follow its line and through its tension disc, so again, I hold the, both ends of the thread and kind of wiggle, make sure it gets into its own tension disc under this little panel and then up and then over, over that. And that's where it's going to meet up with the yellow. So here there are two thread guides, the blue on the right, the yellow on the left. Okay, so that blue comes right down and then I just need to get it through its needle, the right hand needle. I have the presser foot 
up because that takes the tension off all of the threads so you can pull them through more easily. You might want to put it down at this point um, just to give yourself a bit more space to get into those needles. Into the right hand needle. Okay, there we go through that needle and then put, catch it behind. Pass it right behind. Make sure it's not getting looped on anything. And then that one's done. Okay, the yellow thread coming right down into its tension disc under that, over that, into its own side of the thread guide there. And then through the needle. There we go. And pass it to your other hand behind. And make sure it's not getting tangled up on anything there. So now let's close it all back up. And I lift up the presser foot so I can get all the threads tucked neatly underneath and coming out to the left. I'm going to put the presser foot back down now. It does help them to chain together better here. And we're looking good. Most sergers have a thread cutter on the side there. Okay, so that's the basics. And you can see that it's not that much fun, right? It's kind of a pain in the neck. So when we're changing thread color, we don't have to do that every time. That's the good news. So I'm going to show you how you can just easily tie on your new color, pull them through, and it's so much faster. So let's do that. When I am changing the thread color, I just gather up all those threads and cut those off. Okay. Take away all those multicolor ones. When I'm putting new color on, if I don't have all four exactly the same, that's okay. You know, they'll blend in together and they'll just look fine. Put your biggest ones on the looper because they are, the loops take up a lot more thread than the needles. So you'll put all those on, bring them up through the thread guide, and then you're just gonna take the first thread and tie those two together, just around like that. Next one, same thing. Up through its thread guide, pick up the next one and tie it on. It's the two together and around, put your ends through the loop. Good. So now those knots are not gonna pull through the needle, but they'll pull through on the two loopers. So here's what we do. So lift up the presser foot to take the tension off your thread. And then kind of wiggle the wheel back and forth a little bit to kind of just get that thread disengaged. Okay, can you see that last loop there? If I just cut this red one that is holding that last loop, now I can pull those all through. It's the last loop going like this, right? And the, the other threads are kind of grabbing that loop. This is what you want to cut. The last loop going this way, if the scissors can represent the thread there. Okay, so now when I pull that, do you see how this knot is already hitting the needle? So it's not going to pass through the needle. So I'm just going to take those two needle threads until both knots have passed. I'm cutting that off before the knot and after the knot. And now I can pull all that through. I might need to wiggle to get it through the tension discs and just cut off all those other colors. And now all I need to do is thread my two needles again. That's it. In fact, you know what, as you're surging, if you notice that one of your looper cones is getting low, when you get close to the end, just tie on your new color and you can just surge the knot right through. So, my two needles are threaded now. Put the closer foot down and try it out. Make sure it works. Perfect, now we've got all blue thread. Okay, now I get to teach you a couple of tricks on how to actually use your serger. The first thing about a serger is this chain of thread. That chain of thread should be there when you start and when you finish a seam. Never cut the thread close to the needle and we don't, like on a regular sewing machine, we don't lift up the presser foot and pull and then cut the thread way over here. We don't, we just always want to have that chain of thread there when you leave the machine. Okay, the presser foot also stays down. We hardly ever lift up the presser foot at all, only to relieve the tension when we're threading and to pivot around a corner, which I'll show you a bit. All right, the next thing I wanna tell you is that this in here is a cutting blade. You can't cut your finger on there. It's not dangerous that way. How it's dangerous is 
that you can cut your fabric when you don't mean to and I'll show you what I mean. So that cutting blade is where I want to put my, the edges of my fabric up together. So they are coming right up to the edge of that blade. Notice I don't have any pins in here. No pins should come up to your serger at all because if the pins got cut in that blade, it dulls your blade, really plays havoc with your machine. So normally we sew first and then serge. If you're working with a knitted fabric, you can just serge, especially this is a four thread serger. Most of them are these days and you can just serge knits. On wovens, I still like to sew and then serge. And I'm just doing this for a demonstration. So here we go. Right along the edge. Okay, so that cutting blade is doing a good job. It's gonna just be cutting off all those fuzzy bits. But if I'm not organized, if I have my fabric, my underside of the fabric sticking out, it's gonna cut that right off. And I've had students accidentally have a fold in their fabric underneath and they surge that off and then they have a hole. So you have to just be careful that what you're putting in there is just two layers. You can feel that it's just what your two layers. If you feel a bump in there, you need to look into that and investigate why there's a bump and do you really want to surge there. Coming across, now this is a straight piece, but if it was a, a curved piece, I would just straighten out the fabric and just treat it like a straight edge. When I get to the end, there's no back tack, there's no reverse on serger, so you just keep going, keep going until you reach that cutting blade there. And there we go, there's our beautiful serged edge. I'm gonna show you a couple more things. One is how to pivot around a corner. I'm gonna show you on this corner. I'm gonna come across here and down just to show you how to pivot on a corner. And this is another thing I love to use a serger for is it just is gonna cut off all your threads from past seams. So we'll just tuck that under, let the blade cut that thread off. Now to pivot around this corner, I wanna go until my needles just clear the edge. So I turn the wheel a little bit just to sink the needles down just past the fabric they're just off the fabric yeah and then i lift up and wiggle a little bit if i have to now i can pivot around the corner and put my presser foot back down and go good so that's how it turns the corner so it's just that little pivot where you're lifting out the presser foot where you just your needles come to just past the fabric that allows you to lift up turn and you keep going Good. Okay, the next thing I want to show you are three different ways that you can surge off of a finished edge. Do you know what I mean? Most of the time when we surge, we'll be surging an edge and then where those chains of thread come off the end, that's going to get cut off in the next seam or hem. Sometimes, especially when we're doing an alteration, you might need to be surging off of a finished edge, like a nicely hemmed edge, and you'll be surging right off there. There's no other seam or hem that's going to be cleaning up the end of that surging. It might be when you're taking in a t-shirt or a sleeve or something like that, and you've got, you're going off of a nicely finished edge. How do you deal with that chain of thread? If you just cut it, it's going to come unraveled. So I'm going to show you three quick little easy tricks to deal with that. It doesn't happen very often where you'll need this trick, but one day you'll thank me. The first method, I'm just going to serge this one just like normal, coming down along that edge. Making sure my two finished edges are lined up nicely. And go slow because it's a little bit thick. Now I'm going to chain off and leave myself a longer than normal chain. Remember, never cut your thread close to the needle. With this long one, I'm going to just take it and tie that in a knot, but I don't want that knot to end up anywhere on this chain. I want the knot to be snuggled right down. So I've got a pin and I'm going to hold the pin right up against the edge of the fabric and pull that knot down tight onto that pin. Then I can cut that right beside. So that's pretty good, but still, I think we can even do better, right? That little knot bugs me a little bit. The next idea is, same thing, I'm going to make sure my finished edges are lined up. Come down that edge. 
now this time the seam like when we pivoted where I want the needles to just clear this edge same thing I want to go until my needles just past the edge right the needles are just barely off the fabric and then I'm gonna lift up I might have to wiggle that wheel a little bit to get it to disengage and flip this over flip it over get it right back in there and I'm gonna come up the other way isn't that genius right back up the other way I don't have to go the whole way just a few inches and chain on so now my serging ends nicely at the bottom of that finished edge pretty good trick hey one other situation sometimes you'll be starting at that finished edge so what do we do then when you're starting at that finished edge I'm gonna get them together nicely under there I'm just going to go a couple stitches, maybe just even that much. Good. Then I'm going to lift up and take that chain of thread and pull and wiggle it all the way to the, to the front, all the way towards me, and I'm going to serge over it. Oh my gosh, is that genius or what, right? Look, it's so nice. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is unpicking serging. Now, I do have a video out called Seven Ways to Unpick Your Sewing and Serging, but if you haven't seen that, I'm going to show you again right here. Just cut off your two chains of thread, both sides, just cut that off. Good, then take your seam ripper, and you'll have to see the two needle threads. They go parallel there, holding the loops down. And now I'm using the seam ripper to not cut the thread, but pull out a tail of thread that long enough for you to grab onto. And I'm trying not to pull the loops because I don't want to tighten up the loops. That just makes everything harder. But now that I have that tail of thread, I can just pull it along. If you have a really long seam here, you might want to cut this, that needle thread in a couple places to make it easier to pull out. And then once I get the second needle thread out, now look closely. Can you see that the needle stitches are holding down those loops? And what you're trying to pull out here is in between the loops, right? Because you really don't want to pull those loops tight. So just find in between two loops, pull that out until you get a piece big enough to pull. Pull it along. Good. Now watch the magic happen here. Nice, hey? That's it for today's video. I hope that gives you some more confidence with your serger. And I hope you are able to find a serger that you love and you can spend 30 years together the way I've been with mine. If you liked today's video, please hit like and subscribe because that makes me feel so good. My name is Catherine and I can't wait to sew with you again.